Welcome. Pretty good view, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, this is one of the best views in town, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we're uh, thrilled to, uh, about the fact that uh, this golf course is now locally owned. Uh, so I think that's going to be a real plus for our community. Uh, just a couple of things about what's going on in town. Uh, we are moving uh, ahead quite a bit on Cypress Park. Um, the, again, we're expecting that to be done in March. The hotel, as you can see, the, there's a lot of movement of dirt down there. All the new pavers and landscaping is in. The only thing that isn't in are the bollards and chains along the channel and those will be going in soon. Um, the project for Havasu Riviera, we talked about that a little bit last time and the fact that uh, we had hoped that there'd be some more uh, activity at this point. Well, as it turns out, they were about to get their Army Corps of Engineer permit, which is called a 404 permit, um, and then they got a call from the Corps indicating that um, uh, they had made a small mistake in the fact that they forgot to notify a federal agency and they have to take 30 more days for them to get that through. So they were ready to put shovel in the ground, and, uh, but they will do so uh, fairly, uh, fairly soon. We're still working with them in terms of uh, infrastructure needs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, this past weekend, uh, we had a wonderful event on Friday for those of you who attended. Um, down at the new uh, piece of property that the city does own. Um, for those, and the paper again called it the Springburg McAndrew Park. It is not gonna be a park. <laughs> We've told them time and time again, it's not a park. Um, that grass is all gonna disappear. What eventually you will see is, for those of you who uh, were down there, you saw some of it, but uh, there'll be a public plaza. Um, about half of that property will be a public plaza with music and Wi-Fi and seating areas, trees, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll build a bridge over across Pima Wash that will connect to the parking lot that we bought several years ago. And um, on the other piece of that property, we will be working with a private developer to create uh, a retail uh, area that could include uh, boutique shops, microbreweries, restaurants, coffee shops, that sort of thing. And um, as we understand it, the uh, interest in that is incredibly high. It's just unbelievable. In fact, uh, our Partnership for Economic Development, who's handling all of that process, uh, they've had to kind of shift gears a little bit and put together kind of a score sheet so that they can figure out um, who wants to build buildings and what they'll do for that for us in that regard, and then who wants to be to rent space in those buildings. And the demand is so high, we were at one point in time gonna put our entrepreneur center in that building so that entrepreneurs could uh, explore new product ideas, meet with customers, expand businesses, etc. Well, um, now it's been pretty clear that that's gonna be pretty pricey to do that because of the demand for the for that area, so we're going to move them someplace different and allow uh, more shops and restaurants, etc., to be in that space. So we're we're excited about it, and everyone had a good time. Uh, the only complaint I got about Friday night was that the beer garden needed to be bigger, but uh, <laughs> that was about it. Other than that, everyone loved it. Um, then Saturday morning, we uh, had a group of volunteers go down to the uh, Sarah Park Trailhead and improve that area. If you haven't been down there in a while, go take a look. It's beautiful. They, the, they did a great job, um, and uh, there's more work to be done. Uh, but now that trailhead has uh, water and bathrooms, and it's just and and landscaping. It looks really very nice. 
and the use for that trailhead is tremendous. A lot of people like to go there and hike down to the lake. Some people take their their dogs with them. Others use go on um, their bicycles. So, but all in all, it's uh, it looks great. And we will continue to do additional design uh, on Sarah Park. We've we've gotten that started. If you hear four duck. Um, <laughs> Um, or yell at me so I can duck in time. <laughs> the uh, yesterday, a group of us went um, to Baghdad, Arizona. Um, if you don't know uh, what's in Baghdad, it is uh, it's a mining operation, and Baghdad is a company town. And I kid you not, it is a company town. All, everything's virtually owned by. Report McMoran. And the reason we went, it was uh, I went to an economic development conference, and the gentleman sitting next to me was talking about some of the challenges they have in uh, bringing um, younger families, millennials, to their company uh, for careers. And that kind of coincided with our Havasu Vision 2020, and now what we're trying to do is. Uh, create amenities within our own town that not only satisfy the citizens we do have, but also attract younger families to our community. As we've talked before, that our average age here in town is 53, and if we're going to continue to enjoy services such as medical and uh, other types of services, we need younger people to, to uh, hold those positions. So. They invited us to go to see Baghdad and see the mining operation. Um, it was very impressive. They, uh, they employ about 850 people. Uh, the operation will be there, has been there for a long time. And they said a minimum life of that operation will be 2057, likely to go beyond that. But what they were trying to do is figure out a way that they could uh, partner with us so that our high school students, for instance, that may not want to go to college but would like to explore trades as a career, uh, almost 30% of their positions are entry level. And so we're, we're talking to them about how they can uh, utilize some of our resources and maybe attract a, a workforce for them. And then we can partner, continually partner and let people know that uh, for those who still want to live in Has Lake Havasu City, uh, even though it's a two and a half hour drive, that that is available to them. Interestingly enough, they do have employees that live in Lake Havasu City. Not a lot, but they do have a few. And what some of them do is they not only own a place here, but they rent a place in Baghdad because uh, they have, the company owns 900 homes and they can rent, uh, somebody was telling us they rent uh, a four bedroom home from the company for $350 a month. Not bad, uh, pretty good. The other uh, thing that I found interesting, we they took us to lunch and there was a group of, uh, people that were there and was talking to the lady next to me and said how long have you lived in Baghdad and she looked at me and she says my entire life and I'm thinking wow that must be really unusual only to find out three of the six people they had there had lived in Baghdad their entire life it's a generational uh, mining operation and uh, you know they absolutely love it so we it's, it's interesting, I, I tell you that story because it's interesting about who you meet and what opportunities there might be for uh, our citizens and partnering with other organizations to make both entities a little bit better. So, uh, let's see, what else do we have going on, Charlie? Wayfinding is wrapping up. Oh yeah, the, as, as you probably have looked around town, the new wayfinding signs, um, generally, you know, they're, uh, 
that went from the beginning was, and I'll be honest, was somewhat controversial. Uh, we got the cost down to about half of what it was originally going to be. Interestingly enough, um, the comments I'm getting at this point are virtually all positive. Um, now that people have seen the signs and what they're meant to do, uh, they like the fact that they're better than the old signs that were so inconsistent. One sign would be made of wood and, and was deteriorating. Others would be uh, a brown sign. Some other sign would be green or blue or whatever. Um, these are very consistent. We're going to be working on the monuments on each side of town to make those better. But generally speaking, people have been really pleased with the uh, with the signs themselves. Uh, I do get a lot of comments about the one sign just before you cross the London Bridge that said London Bridge 200 feet and they, why would you do that? Believe it or not, people cross the London Bridge, get to the other side and they go, where's the London Bridge? <laughs> we go down to the visitor center and the number one question at the visitor center as they're staring at the London Bridge is where is the London Bridge? Number two question, where's the bathroom? Uh, so so that's why we did that because that we, you know if you think about it when you do go across we know where it's at but you have no idea that you're crossing the London Bridge. Um, so um, but I think now uh, we've got signs directing people to ASU to our various parks um, and uh, to the high school, which nobody knew where that was either. So I think overall, it's really a very nice beautification project and it, it goes hand in hand with our Havasu Vision 2020 and trying to make our town more appealing to families, etc. cetera. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I can think about. Search for a new city manager? Uh, oh yes, uh, search for a new city manager. Uh, is, <laughs> Can't forget that. It, it is ongoing. Uh, we will be... Are you cussing up there? Be the new city Try your lights. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yeah, the horn works, so let's try the lights. Okay. Um, we'll be, uh, we've been getting a lot of interest in the new city manager. Uh, we'll be whittling that number down uh, to probably about four, and then we'll interview uh, those four and make a decision. As I said before, uh, we're trying to get somebody on board. Um, late January at the latest if we can, earlier if possible, but we'll see. Charlie uh, retires December, his last day is December 29th. But we are making a lot of prog progress and um, a lot of interest in our community uh, because people see what uh, we've been able to do over the last decade um, and also being in second place for America's Best Communities hasn't hurt. Um, and I don't mind saying this, uh, can I, I can't, but I won't say the name. Uh, a city manager from one of our competitors actually uh, got a hold of me to find out how he can apply to for this position. So, um, which was um, quite a compliment, quite honestly. So, so with that, I think I'm going to open it up for questions. Okay, I guess we're done here. <laughs> What a recognized day. Can I talk isn't? garbage? Oh, we can. Guess. We can. I just wonder what, what, how the things are going. Um, well, the cans aren't going to arrive until sometime in January. And um, the we anticipate that once everybody gets them, understands them a little bit better, they'll appreciate them. Um, we're the only community in the entire area that doesn't use this method. Um, Desert Hills, Kingman, Bullhead, you name it, they all use this method. Um, we are uh, still looking at ways to extend the, the life of our uh, landfill. 
Uh, as Charlie probably mentioned last time, we discovered that over 40% of what's going into the landfill um, comes from outside the area. And we're gonna stop that. Because that's, the only 22% comes from residential. Um, and now commercial, uh, there's quite a bit of commercial and we're gonna try to, um, we're gonna ask Republic to put together a, a recycling program for commercial. For those of you who don't know, we don't control uh, commercial trash pickup. Um, a few years ago, state law was changed that prohibited cities from mandating a provider for commercial pickup. They, can, they, they are to go out and get their own and we don't have anything to do with it. We can select for residential and that's it. Um, so we, but ha having said that, we've asked for public services to begin working with our commercial businesses to do more recycling. Most of our commercial businesses wanna do that. I mean, we've talked to several that say, you know, I own a bar and a restaurant and I hate to see all of these bottles, cans, etc., not being recycled, so. But again, their, their new equipment should arrive sometime in January. And uh, the only thing that I haven't heard, did they ever come up with um, what to, were to do with their old cans? Uh, you know, they're still working on it. Last time, uh, last I met with uh, Matt Cross at Republic, he said they're, they're working on uh, a potential process where the first time um, a trash pickup occurs under the new program, they'll make it available to where people who don't want to keep their old trash cans can put those out and they'll pick those up and those will be recycled as well. Yeah, yeah, because I've got yeah, several of the older cans and they're about, they're definitely needed to be replaced. So this, <laughs> this works out pretty well, but I don't want them to go to the landfill either. So I'd like to see them recycled. Other questions? Any idea who's going in the Hastings building? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> um, but I will, I will on TV dispel the, the prominent rumor, no, it is not Trader Joe's. <laughs> I hear that over and over and over again. Isn't it Trader Joe's? No, it is not Trader Joe's. Um, now the, um, we've been, uh, we were told by a site selector as to who is likely to go in there, but I, my guess is they haven't made the final decision yet. And consequently, they would just assume that we waiting for that corporate entity to make the final decision. Yeah, they're, they're waiting to uh, tie up all of their entitlements and permits uh, before they make an announcement. But they said in the meantime, they'd like us to not make that announcement for them. Right. So, soon. <laughs> yeah. What's that? At what point in time do you uh, think we would be finding out yeah, yeah, the question was, when will we find out who is in ha going into Hastings? And as Charlie had just said, soon. <laughs> um, they're, they're trying to get all the various, with one, they've got to make a decision. Two, they've got to then get all the various uh, permits, et cetera, and entitlements. And once they do that, then they're comfortable releasing who's going in there. But until then, they've asked us not to say anything. January, June, we don't. They have not told us. That part they haven't told no, us. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're we're not in control of the timeline. Yeah. So it's 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 a corporation that uh, when they're ready, they'll tell us, and then we'll make an announcement. Chuck. Uh, isn't that what Charlie says when you ask him when he's going to retire soon? Pretty much, yep. and it is soon. <laughs> On contact point, you said you're working with them with uh, for infrastructure. Have yes. Have they got an engineering and stuff for where they need to put pump stations and everything like that? They're is that what they're working out now? They've been working with engineers for quite some time. Uh, Greg is here today, and he's been, uh, Greg Frosley, and he's been working with them as well, uh, making sure that um, 
Uh, we agree with what they plan to do, looking at cost estimates. Um, so yeah, that's all been in process for months. For also, months. Also on the uh, uh, property at Corio, yeah. is, uh, you're talking about restaurants and, and uh, stuff like that. All the, all the bottoms gotta be commercial, right? If they put, do you see them putting more than one story there? I do. In that, so the second story could be uh, it can office be space in that? It can, or it could be commercial too. Okay, what about uh, residential? They could do that if they wanted to. Okay. You can go four stories. Because I know that on, on McCulloch and all that, they, you could get the third story or in that. Yeah, I honestly, I could be uh, completely wrong on this. But I honestly believe that it would probably be a two-story building. But if they wanted to go four, zoning permits that on Main Street. So they could literally do two stories of commercial, uh, then some uh, office space, and then residential if they wanted to do that. The bad thing is they need to have to find parking. Um, not really. The parking is available to them for on the Mesquite parking lot. Um, so if they had a, a residential units there, uh, yes, they would have to walk across the Pima Wash, but we're not talking about a long walk. Well, I realize that, but I mean, like a restaurant's required to have more spaces than a small store or, or a little Correct. store or something like that. But our, but our parking lot provides more than ample parking for that entire property. Okay. Which, so is, it, which is why we bought that parking lot years ago, because we figured eventually something's going to happen with that uh, property, because it had been pretty much handcuffed, handcuffed in trying to build anything and provide adequate parking. We had an opportunity as a city to buy that piece of property on Mesquite at a very low price during the middle of the recession, and we took that opportunity. We, <coughs> Again, with no real plans for it, but we knew eventually we were going to use it. And it didn't take but just a few years, and now we need it. We're actually in negotiations for another piece of property to, uh, for additional parking, um, and we'll see whether or not we're able to get it or not. Now, you said the interest is very high. It is. In everything. Do you see that spurring any of the people that own the properties on McCulloch <coughs> to do anything different down there than just sit on the property? We was, you know, we call it a downtown catalyst project for a reason. We're yep. hoping it's a catalyst for other property owners to, to look at it and say, so this is what could be done, and why are the rents so high there, and I'm getting a very low rent? Yep. Maybe I ought to do something with my property. We have a lot of, um, out of the area property owners on McCulloch Boulevard. And, um, but we're hoping over time that uh, they'll either improve their property or decide it's time to sell it and let somebody else improve it. Um, <clears throat> but again, that's why we, we, we call it the DCP, Downtown Catalyst Project, with the idea that we're gonna spur quality development along that street. And then uh, again on that street as well, because we're in the next few years going to have to r remove and replace uh, all the uh, uh, asphalt on the road. Uh, we're going to be redesigning the sidewalks, the parking, all of that. Yep. So that will also improve. And we're going to try to make it more pedestrian friendly and help merchants because if we extend sidewalks, then they can use that area for outside seating. And other than a couple of months, um, outside seating, like today, is pretty desirable. Other questions? The, uh, the other question I have is, are you still looking at making a corridor from the college across over there? You're talking about making that there is that the other property you're looking at? Yeah, uh, not at the moment, but yeah, we're st we still want some connectivity to ASU, but that's not the property I was referring okay. to. So, by the way, Dan Essie is here, one of the 
new owners of this uh, golf course. And again, thank you for bringing it local. Other questions? Yes. Uh, okay, the question is, has anything moved on the um, independent senior living complex on Swanson? Uh, they have submitted plans. I don't even, are those out yet or not? I don't know. Greg, do you know? Are those, not, are, are the plans. plans out yet for the? They're in plan review right now. We okay. Have. okay, so they're in plan review. It still plans to move forward. Uh, we're also, um, planning to meet with Dr. Crow. Once again, a group of us went to see Dr. Crow, president of Arizona State University, a couple of months ago uh, to talk about um, what we can do collectively to expand the student body at ASU. Right now it's only about 150 students. And uh, we're going to be meeting again in the next uh, probably 60 days here in Lake Havasu City with a group of their executives. Uh, Dr. Crow will attend for a short period of time. We're going to bring school district folks in that conversation as well. Uh, really what they, one of the things that they're going to need is a longer term lease on the, uh, the property that they're at. If you recall, that's the old Daytona Middle School. And uh, what they have is a five-year uh, renewable lease, but they really need something longer because nobody wants to make, you know, multi-million dollar investments on a five-year lease. Um, so that's going to be part of the discussion. And, uh, but we're, we're hopeful that uh, we can put together a intergovernmental agreement that we can help them with some infrastructure and in return, they're able to recruit more students. If that campus became uh, 1,000, 2,000 or more students, uh, it would certainly spur some of the downtown development, Chuck, that you were talking about. Right now at 150, it's not making a huge impact at all. So, so we're hopeful. Uh, they are also working to um, do a uh, or have a more robust recruiting effort um, in Kingman, Bullhead City, Mojave Valley, that sort of thing. Most of the students they get uh, come from Southern California. Other questions? Yes. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. No, this is uh, a great view. Everyone's enjoying it. Other than me, because they got me facing this way. <laughs> Thanks again for coming. You bet, absolutely. Chuck. Uh, is there any movement on uh, those two pieces of property up by Donkey Acres that we uh, uh, brought into the city? I'm going to ask. I, I, I thought those were. They've been annexed. They've been annexed. Annex, yeah. in. Been annexed. The preliminary plat for one has been approved by PZ Planning and Zoning. The other one uh, is is still in development. We just met last week with both the developers, trying to get them to, to to work together with their traffic patterns and whatnot. But they're both moving forward right now. It's going well. So, uh, were you able to pick that up on the microphone? Maybe. You're going to talk, Greg. Go up there with them. Well, the, uh, yeah. the, ans the answer is uh, the two developers are working together to uh, deal with traffic patterns and whatnot. And yes, it is moving, moving forward. You know, the, um, I don't think it's going to be too much longer that uh, there will be requests for the state land department to release properties to the north of us within our city limits. Uh, because we are, uh, we don't have that many lots left, uh, and uh, this is a very desirable place to live. As you can see, construction's occurring all over the place. Um, now, as we've talked before, if state lands releases property to our north, and when I say to our north, kind of where housing stops between that and uh, the airport, that's all 
Arizona State Trust lands, but within our city limits, about 4,000 acres or more. Ultimately, uh, developers will request uh, that that be released for purchase. And that, those are based on auctions. That will all be developed vastly different than how our original town was developed. I, what I see is a um, developer coming in and buying three, four, five hundred acres or more, uh, and they would be solely responsible for all the infrastructure. It would not be a one home at a time. Those will be subdivisions. Um, for us, that is clearly better because we don't want to pay for the growth. And uh, we'll make, uh, as a city, we'll have to extract uh, things such as fire stations, uh, you know, and other uh, parks and other amenities as those get built. But uh, we have enough water for those of you who are concerned, well, how are we going to get the water? We have enough water for 96,000 residents. And um, honestly, over time, uh, we will have to use that if we we cannot just bank it forever um, what we're seeing right now is uh, attempts and probably I hope not successful but we're seeing attempts from uh, the Phoenix area to take water uh, from the Colorado River by buying it from various farms and even the town of Quartzsite um, I've just recently uh, constructed a letter of objection that I sent to uh, state representatives, our senators, our uh, congressmen, uh, U.S. senators, uh, CAP, Department of Water Resources, saying uh, that water was always intended to stay along the Colorado River. And if some of these entities want to sell it, they need to sell it to Colorado River communities. This was a pact made decades ago that roughly 165,000 acre feet would remain along the river for river communities to use. And what we're seeing now, um, particularly up in Mojave Valley, are investors, they call themselves farming investors. The moment I saw that name, I knew that couldn't be true uh, because nobody's investing in farms. But what they do is they buy the farms, fallow the land, and sell the water rights. Recently, for, what was it, 4,000 acre feet, roughly? Mm -hmm. $34 million. So buying that land was a great investment. But we're trying to stop that, uh, that sale. We don't know if we'll be successful or not. Because what we're afraid of is that once the first one goes through, all the other farming operations will cease. They'll fallow the land, sell the water. Um, so we're we're hope, we're going to try. Chuck, isn't it? Because I remember hearing different things about uh, like the almond growers coming over here and the uh, Saudi Arabia buying because they have unlimited water rights when they're farming, right? Um, I don't know if that I would call it unlimited, but um, what's happening is, yeah, in the park area, uh, foreign uh, entities are buying the land, and in, in many cases what they're doing is they're actually farming it, but they're shipping the product overseas. overseas. So, in effect, they're using the water um, to grow crops that they need so they don't have to use water uh, in their country. Well, I know the almond growers were coming over too from California because they got such water restrictions over there. Um, that could be, I'm not familiar with that. I think that's groundwater. I think, I think the issue with the almond growers is groundwater. And uh, they're going into what, what's called unadjudicated basins in the state and looking at areas where they might be able to draw on the groundwater tables. And of course that has the the people who live in those regions uh, very concerned, obviously for their uh, for the security of their groundwater. 
Uh, that may be what you're talking about. I don't know for sure. But there's always a limit on how much water you can draw from the Colorado River. Yep. Other questions? Certainly. It's a big beating a dead horse, but the second bridge to me has to be a priority. Um, we certainly would like to, the question is, is the second bridge a top priority in Lake Havasu? Um, the answer is, it is a high priority. It's how is it going to get paid for? And um, the, of, of course, the people that live on the island that have lived there for 40 years don't want to pay for it. Um, citizens don't want to pay for it. Um, and so the only way really to probably make it as equitable as possible is assuming that we can even do it is a toll bridge. And in that way, everybody that ever uses it is paying their fair share. If you don't use it, you never pay for it. Um, well, years ago, there were um, companies that wanted to build the bridge and put on that toll. And uh, after the Great Recession, there has been virtually no interest in doing it. But we, I've asked um, our Metropolitan Planning Organization to explore what uh, grants are available to begin at least the planning for that process. Um, and then see if there may be other grants that will help us build it. But um, we, I don't think there's anybody at City Hall that wouldn't like to see a second bridge. It's just literally how are you going to get it paid for? We have, um, we the city over the years has procured property to allow for the second bridge. Right. We have the alignment is set. I mean, it's the engineering hasn't been done, but the uh, you know the the imagineering part has been done, and property has been acquired. Uh, we're going to be paying off uh, in the coming year. We're going to be finally paying off the bonds that were let when we paid uh, for property on the island side of, uh, of where the bridge is going to land. Um, and there's property on the mainland side, you know, in the area of the London Bridge swap meet area. There's properties that the city owns in there uh, that were acquired in preparation for a second bridge one day. But it's in my estimation, since um, the, the interest that was there before the recession has fizzled up, it's gone away. Um, in my estimation, a second bridge will come about as a result of a large scale resort development coming onto the island. A, a Marriott or a, you know, a very large scale uh, hotel, convention center, you know, probably, uh, possibly another golf course or a bigger golf course on the island. Uh, I think it will be a, a major development like that on the island uh, that will bring a second bridge with it. In fact, a development like that would lead to an exaction from the city. So if you want to build this, you're going to need to either build the second bridge or participate heavily in the construction of a second bridge because of the, the additional traffic and the fact that it, then it becomes uh, much more economically viable to build the second bridge. That's just my prediction. We'll see how it goes. Anyone else? Chuck. Can we, uh, two questions. Since you're on the RTMA, when are they going to do that center divider over by the, the Kiowa? And the second question is, when are they going to start uh, on Lake Havasu Avenue between Swanson and Mesquite? Okay, the first one on Kiowa, uh, that will be done by ADOT. So the question was, when will the uh, reconfiguration of Highway 95 by the old Walmart shopping center be completed? Um, we're waiting, we've been talking to ADOT, they're still working with some of the merchants that are there and uh, property owners to make sure that uh, they fully understand what's going to be accomplished and coming to some agreement. Um, so until that's done, it won't get started, but we're, we'd like to see it started soon. The, uh, that area 
a lot of people make the whole idea on that area is to increase safety. Um, so they're, what they're going to be doing is putting a center median along Highway 95 because what people want to do is make left-hand turns in and out of the shopping area and it's the uh, we have more traffic accidents in that area than anywhere else in town because it's you got people coming in uh, from outside of town at pretty high rates of speed and uh, people making left-hand turns without fully uh, looking at everything and so it, it's not a good situation. They originally <laughs> wanted to put a roundabout there and um, we said no. Um, and we, we, we even said if you want to put a roundabout there um, you're on your own. We're we're not, we're because they wanted our, us to agree to uh, a roundabout, and so that we could handle all public complaints. And we said, <laughs> "No, <laughs> you want a roundabout? You are on your own." Um, so the uh, so they decided maybe a roundabout wasn't necessary. Not to mention, we it was pretty clear that by doing the medians you stopped about 90% of the accidents. And uh, so, and the reason they like using roundabouts is that I love them or hate them, um, they do reduce accidents because of how it works. But we just felt that that area with the amount of shopping that goes on in that shopping center, along with the fact that it would just be one in the entire town other than the one by Kmart there and Wheeler Park um, was not a good idea. So we're hopeful that they'll come to some agreements with all the merchants, and, uh, but we, they have not given us a timeline, Chuck. Lake Havasu Avenue, that should be starting pretty quick, isn't it? Greg, any Greg, idea? do you know when? We opened bids for that project uh, last week or the week before. They came in significantly overbid, about two hundred thousand dollars. So we're evaluating that situation right now, and I need to bring a proposal back to Charlie to either move forward to go to council and ask for the additional funds, or the more likely scenario scenario is to uh, repackage the uh, the project and rebid it. Uh, even even with that scenario, we feel we'll be under construction in January. Okay. So um, again, what? Uh that is along between Mesquite and Swanson on Lake Havasu Avenue. Another uh, project that's going to, one, improve the road, uh, increase the safety along that area. And as Greg was just saying, um, the bids came back. They were over budget. Um, and then we'll reevaluate, but we hope to get started sometime in January. Other questions? Wow. Okay, I'll ask you again. Uh, have they already coordinated with like uh, the electric company and and all that stuff to who's, do all that stuff that they want to do in there while we're going to have that done? Who's they? Uh, Lake Havasu. Yeah. The you know like the cable company and the power company and anything that's going to be oh yeah has we, to go underground. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a big part of the project. Right. Right. Yeah. No, that's. There's water lines, there, everything else is Yeah, there's there. water, sewer, you name it. We've got a lot, I mean, that's a, <laughs> as Charlie said, that's a big part of the project when you're digging up roads. Right. And so. on the one up by uh, Kiowa, uh, are they still planning on putting a signal yes. there by Staples? Still planning to put a signal uh, at uh, in front of Staples. Okay. Um, again, um, the reason they're doing that, even though there won't be much distance between the two signals is that we we believed that they needed to increase access mm -hmm. and, that, and we wanted it to be behind staples but there's a giant wash back there so you're not able to do that so because um, we if we didn't put in or if they didn't put in another signal we could see people trying to make a left on Kiowa there and that line would be way down Highway 95 so we just we needed additional access so that's that's the reason for that no one else 
Wow, it's, what time is it? <laughs> 8 20. It's early. Okay, I, I was given some notes, so I guess I'm supposed to read these. Uh, oh, yes. Um, we will be, and when I say we, the Clean Colorado River Sustainability Coalition, also known as CRISCO. Um, we invite citizens to a outreach meeting, um, and that's gonna be on October 19th. The Lake Havasu City uh, Council Chambers, which is also the police department, 5.30 to 7, and we're gonna be talking about the Lower Colorado River Watershed Management Plan. Uh, Crisco's been uh, around a long time. I've been the chairman of that organization uh, for 11 years, I believe. Um, it's originally started back in the 90s when we were told as a community that we were gonna have to begin putting sewers in our community. So it was an organization that uh, we were utilizing to lobby our federal uh, government to help us pay for it. Uh, long story short, we didn't get a whole lot from that, about $4 million. Um, although we did get about $8 million for some water lines, but that's not what we were there for. We changed the name to this one now, Clean Colorado River Sustainability Coalition. And what we try to do is monitor the quality of our river. And because uh, we could all fight over quantities, but if the river is polluted, it doesn't matter much how much water you have. And so this organization, um, the members not only are Lake Havasu City, Bullhead City, Mojave County, but also the three largest water agencies in the West. Metropolitan Water District is one of our members. Uh, Southern Nevada Water Authority is one of our members. And so is Central Arizona Project is one of our members. The tribe is one of our members. Um, and we're actually um, have made invitations to other uh, like organizations to, to join us. We are gonna be working on a project to um, map the entire bottom of our lake um, because the lake is changing. We don't know a lot about why, but we, we also don't have uh, any basic information about what's underneath. And so that's gonna be one of our projects as well. But again, uh, if you are interested in water, I would invite you to, do, uh, to come to that meeting on October 19th, 5.30 to 7 p.m. Um, police department, uh, or as we call it, the chamber, uh, council chamber meetings. Also, our next meeting will not be on the first Friday uh, in November. It's gonna be on the second Friday in November. Um, I have to be in Phoenix on the first Friday for a League of Arizona Cities and Towns Executive Committee meeting. So it will be November 10th at the Golden Corral. Veterans Day. Yeah. No, that's no, the it's not. Corps Veterans birthday. Day is November 11th. <laughs> well, well, the, the Friday the 10th is the, kind of a holiday. Before. Yeah, yeah. It's a well, Corps it's a holiday for the city. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so November 10, also uh, the uh, birthday of the Marine Corps. Chuck. Has are they still in negotiations or whatever, or has everything been settled with those idiots at U.S. Fish and Wildlife? <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, we're, we actually have a um, very good relationship now with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. They have a new um, uh, refuge manager. His name's uh, Richie Myers. Um, he lives here in Lake Havasu City. He has a full understanding of the importance of this lake to our community uh, in terms of uh, not just it provides us with water, but also the lifeblood because of tourism. They issued a compatibility determination uh, a couple of months ago. There was virtually no objections to it. The uh, 
the areas that we were concerned that might get closed remain open. So they, they put a, uh, what I would call some common sense kind of changes to it. Um, and also, um, they, there were some areas that there were um, buoys for no wake as you went up the river that had never been codified. And we were good with that because we felt those buoys should be there to slow down some of it, like uh, what, what's it called? Uh, Devil's Elbow, I think yeah. it's called. And, and then as you get close to Highway 40 right there, there's some, those were actually requested by the Havasu uh, Marine Association. And so um, other than that, now we're, we're good. We're good, we're, ha we're very happy with the result. And um, we've been, uh, we have a great working relationship now with it, with this new gentleman. He comes out of Louisiana. He's a, if you haven't met him, you ought to. He's a really nice guy, very reasonable. I'm sorry I called him an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of changes at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife with the new administration. A lot of people got moved around. Uh, uh, Director Tuggle, who we used to deal with out of New Mexico. He, he got moved back to Washington, D.C. I've not met the new regional director yet. Well, they got somebody in there that knows country. You know, he's from Montana, that Zeke, Zeke guy. Uh, that's the national director. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, yes. Um, I would just like to say that the community celebration was spectacular. It was so great to see so many people there. And just how much we appreciate the people that organized it, the restaurants. It far exceeded my expectations. I thought when I read vendors would be going to food truck to food truck. It was just wonderful. I was glad to see so many people there, but I was sad that there were more because yeah. I think that it's going to be wonderful. But you all did just a terrific job. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, Thank it, you very much. Oh, you're welcome. The, um, yeah, there were a lot of people working very hard on that project. Uh, for those of you that didn't go to it, um, as you walked in, we had these huge walls with um, a discussion about the, uh, America's best community. There were uh, portraits of what downtown could look like, um, all kinds of different things and uh, the food was great um, it was catered by Chagrues we also had um, ice cream by scoops and uh, and beer wine and what else? small cakes was there so yeah the food was pretty good um, and it was free and it was free that's right that was amazing that was the most amazing <laughs> so but we we intended it to be a community celebration because um, Notwithstanding that this project now is kind of in the hands of uh, the Partners for, for Economic Development in the city and the uh, America's Best Community team, it really was born out of the community. We held town halls uh, to talk about what changes needed to be done in our community. And after two town halls, the number one priority was a project in our downtown area which what drove us to buy that piece of property um, you know I heard a lot of people say I have no idea why the city's buying another park in the downtown area or whatever well first of all we wouldn't have purchased any property if the community didn't say you need to do something and that's why we did it we were able to buy that piece of property we're glad we were able to, we, ha we could afford to buy that piece of property. And, um, and I agree with you, people really enjoyed that evening. There was about 350 people that showed up and um, there were a ton of questions. And um, everybody just loved the idea that that's gonna now be a public square, much in the, uh, what Flagstaff has done, Prescott has done, and so many other communities. The, uh, you know, some people are concerned about, well, but in the summertime it won't be used much. Well, think about this. Think, uh, other than Hawaii, 
are there too many communities that don't have a small period of time where they can't sit outside? Everywhere back east, you can't sit outside in the snow. And in here, you could if you wanted to sit outside in the heat, but most of us don't want to. But we're talking about a 60 to 75 day period. And throughout the rest of the year, it's like this. And people love it. And um, yeah, and yeah, so, but we're also hoping that the way it's designed, that two story or higher building, it's going to block the western sun. That's how we're designing it. And that will create even more shade for, for all of us. Um, so yeah, it was a great event. And um, I congratulate uh, people like James Gray and Tanya Krieger and Jerry Bracamani and so many others that worked hard to put all of that uh, together. Yeah, yeah, it was a lot of fun. The only thing I did was put in some of the placards on the wall. I couldn't do the top ones. <laughs> we did have ladders, but my wife won't let me get on a ladder. So <laughs> when you fall off one ladder, for some reason, they don't want you to get up on them anymore. Other questions or comments? Chuck, what a surprise. What <laughs> uh, month is our community dinner at the Aquatic Center? In, December. In Huh? December. December. That's what I thought. Are they getting plans for all that or? December fifteenth. Oh, no. okay. December fifteenth. We will have our community dinner. Um, we're <coughs> the we're the victims of our own success on the community dinner. <coughs> we are going to probably have to do two seatings this year because we have um, we have so many people that come to the community dinner that we don't have the capacity in that room any longer. So what we're gonna to try to do is two seatings, one at 4.30 and the other one at 6.30. 6, 6 so um, yeah, I think last year we served close to 800. Yeah. It'll probably be more than that this year. Um, the, the dinner is very popular because it's open to the entire community. We just want people to come in, meet their neighbors, enjoy themselves, whatever. Um, and so, but we'll probably have to do it in two separate seatings this year. We'll of course have Santa Claus there for the, for the kids. And the, uh, uh, it's served by various and council members and other uh, uh, staff people from the city and uh, it's we usually have uh, ham and turkey and potato all the fixings and uh, last year was done by uh, the culinary institute so um, so it's a great event if you haven't been to it please come because uh, you'll you'll really get a kick out of it it's a lot of fun and we have we have music um, Judge, Judge Kalali sings um, along with his band. He's pretty good, believe it or not. June. I'm the quiet one amongst the two of us. But I, I'd like to know if uh, anything is going on in downtown area this year for the Halloween. Yep. Fright night. Fright night? Yeah, yeah fright night once again. Uh, they are uh, rap are working very hard to put all those arrangements. Uh, I'm told that this year um, they're expecting even more uh, merchants, etc., to participate. For those of you who haven't gone to Fright Night, it's on McCulloch Boulevard, the downtown area. Um, various merchants, uh, nonprofit organizations, churches, etc., uh, give out candy, uh, have little haunted houses, whatever. It was started so that our kids would have a safe place to go and enjoy themselves. And we have somewhere between, I'm gonna say five and 7,000 people, kids show up. It's huge. It's huge. It's absolutely huge and the kids love it and the parents love it because it's safe. Yes, sir. With the good news of growth comes the bad news of crime. 
you look on the internet, it looks like our city's going to pieces as far as is crime increasing. Is that a, just a perception or is it really true? No, I think... Home break-ins, all kinds of things are going on and you read about it more. Yeah, the, you know, every town is going to have crime. I don't care what town you live in. Um, and we've had a rash of break-ins, but if you've also followed uh, the releases, we've caught virtually all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, our police department has done a great job in following up. Um, and they have various means of figuring out how that gets done, and I'm not going to disclose what some of those means are. But, um, yeah, you know, and the other piece of it, to be quite honest, and we're not alone throughout uh, America or Arizona, the opioid crisis has driven people to use heroin. Yep. But we, our police department, is monitoring that on a daily basis. Um, the, uh, the, when you see some of the break-ins, like I said, we, I think they caught a good half dozen or more of those. Um, so now we're, you know, one of the things I like about Lake House City is that it continues to be one of the safest communities in Arizona, no doubt about it. As the mayor said, you know, much of what you read that might make you think that crime is going up is actually the is reporting of good police work where they're actually stopping crime from happening in, happening in the community. So uh, yeah, as the mayor said, we we suffer from the same social ills that just about any other community does, and probably less, quite quite actually. Uh, but we're happy to report on the good police work that goes on in this town as well. So it, as the mayor said, it, it is this it, it remains a very safe place to live. Chuck. Uh, on the Halloween thing, uh, uh, on that venue, are they going to have a beer garden there? Or, and are they still going to have, do they still have the one for New Year's Eve down there? They do not. They do not, okay. Because I know mm -hmm. they had tried to move it out to uh, the airport or something one time. And... Um, well, I don't know about moving it out to the airport. They, you know, the thing about the New Year's Eve uh, block party down at the success of that depends on the weather. Yeah. And, you know, they, we had one or two years where the weather, weather was beautiful. You know, it, people could go outside. It was still relatively warm, even at midnight. But then we had a couple of years, it was downright freezing. Yep. And, um, and yeah, so no. it, it just, and, and the problem with that is that you have to make a huge upfront investment. Yep. So they to bring in those bands, they were they were shelling out ten, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, and then hope good weather so that they would sell a lot of tickets and recover. Right. Um, it so it didn't work. And it's a beer garden, I don't know. You about know I'm not that. aware of a special event liquor license that has been requested for Fright Night. I didn't uh, ever think they had one. Before. No, I was well, say, it's, did they ever have one? It's yeah. you know, yeah. it's it's a city event. We partner with the Main Street Association, so. Um, I would be surprised, actually, if alcohol were a part of that event. Right. right. There's plenty. There, all the restaurants and bars are open. They can. It's it's for the kids. It's right. for the kids. Right. Exactly. Now, on the on the uh, community dinner, are these going to be taking donations of uh, food and money and and kids toys and stuff? Uh, money, toys, yes. Food, no. We can't do that anymore. We can't uh, because of health department rules. Because people used to bring in cooked turkeys, we cannot accept those. No, I meant like frozen turkeys. Frozen turkeys, you can give us. Okay. But you may want to give them to interagency, and then they can provide it to us, because that's easier to do than us trying to figure out how to store it all. Right. Um, there will be a um, a toy run uh, by. What's the name of the motorcycle group on um, River, River Riders? Riders. Um, and they, that's where a lot of the toys come from. They do a toy run. They do a wonderful job. All right, unless there's other questions. Appreciate you all being here this morning very much. Thank you so much. Thanks Remember so much. November 10th.